guys, T Fit here with Fit Bully TV. Uh, we're gonna do a little first person stuff today, objectively, because, and I tell you, it's actually snowing in Dallas, and I'll go out there and show you guys some of the snow. Uh, I gotta let Baloo and some of the other dogs out. Paperwork, paperwork, and more paperwork. Get these pups over here. <laughs> Bizarre. Try our best to let them feed. I keep getting messages in my uh, on Instagram at Fitbully Kennels where I reply to everything. Hey, what do I do? How do I get paperwork on a dog? Guys, please stop it. Please, please, please stop it. Quit playing yourself. Because that's what ends up happening. I bought this dog from a dude who came with no paperwork. Why'd you buy the dog? That's like buying a car and not being able to get insurance. You know what type of trouble you'll be in if, you're caught, if you get into an accident and don't have insurance off top. I know because I thought my dad paid my insurance once and he didn't. And I learned very quickly uh, when the police stopped me in Overland Park, Kansas, that it was a $600 ticket. And even when you showed up with the insurance, they just cut it in half. They're like, okay, that's fine. We appreciate you getting the insurance. But guess what? You still owe us $300. I was like, man, dang. Buying a dog without paperwork or trying to get paperwork on a dog and then sell a dog or pups for a lucrative amount of money or stud the dog out without paperwork and fake paperwork or false paperwork is again selling something that has no history, no identity. And because it's in your possession doesn't mean it's got a, a, an identity. We cannot know where to go or grow if we do not know where we've been. And it's imperative for those who want to do good, if not great breeding, that you literally have the history of your dog. Even if the dog has been scatterbred, which means it's got no history. At least you know what you're up against and how to build and work from there. Part of my job, as I feel, you know, in putting out information is to make sure we keep solving problems. And one of the problems that seems to be very consistent is people buying dogs with no paperwork. Here's the thing. You keep buying a dog with paperwork and people buy dogs with paperwork. What do you think up happen, ends up happening? It gives these dogs a bad name. People are not teaching you how to manage the dog. So if you got pit bull or bully breeds, you see the complaints. There was a message I received on Instagram and somebody messaged me. And I tell people, I always reply even if it's a hateful message before I block them. Please stop breeding. I just saw your page and I was crying. Please stop and I go, listen, I respect your position. I understand in the message they talked about being a, a working in shelters. I understand your plight and I'm sorry for it. I said, I can't, for one, we don't breed in excess. This is our last breedings for this year. There'll be no more breedings till next year. And we do it with respect, respect of the dog. We have a process that ensures objectively our dogs go to places where they can be best successful and not bred. I said this before, there's a second pick female in this litter that could have more than likely sold, I could have sold for about $8,000. And no less than five, which my females cost. And I sold the dog for 3,000 to a pet home because I'd rather her have a good life than be misappropriated. So, if you're asking about paperwork, for one, from my understanding, if I was to solve a problem for you, you can do single registrations in various organizations. Second, a single registration, I've not done, done it myself, but you can do single registrations and basically get some paperwork. Two, I'll tell you about number two in a second. I gotta let these dogs out. If you want to. Guys, T Fit here with Fit Bully TV for one. As always, thank you for watching. Oh, 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 I dropped it. Paperwork, people. We're gonna talk paperwork. This is an ABKC registration form. You can see that there, boom. So, you ever get a present on the holiday or for your birthday, especially when you, when you grow up, and you think to yourself, man, I wish this person didn't give me this. I really would appreciate if they gave me the receipt. You'd be like, they give you a gift, and you're like, yo, uh, you got the receipt for this? You're like, uh, why? This is a gift from my heart. Look, the hell with your heart. I uh, wanted to exchange this gift. I get a lot of messages and the question keeps coming up. How do I get paperwork on a dog 
that isn't registered or even a saw comment, my family gave me a dog, lost the paperwork, or what if someone gifted you a dog? I don't like taking gifts that I don't have receipts to. I don't like gifts, period, because I know what I need. And if I don't need it, and if I didn't ask you specifically to assist in it, then keep it yourself. You think somebody giving you a dog is you doing the dog a favor, then you want to turn around and try to upsell. I said this in a small format the other day. Paperwork doesn't add or lower the value of a dog. In the, in the breeding space, it adds value, to be clear. It does give your dog uh, a price point and perspective on where it's come from because history is everything. For those that don't have paperwork that want to get over on people, that's what you're really asking me a lot of times is, how do I get paperwork on a dog? Why would you buy a paper? Why would you buy a dog without the information? They don't allow you to do it with cars, without car insurance. Everything else has policies, procedures, but because anybody can get in and sell you a dog, now you want to figure out how to get over on somebody else with the dog. Getting some random paperwork on a dog and the dog got no history doesn't mean it's a good or bad dog, but it also doesn't mean you should build a business from that dog. One of the best dogs I ever had was 150 bucks. She was a pit bull somewhere somewhere far away in, in Missouri. Coco's still alive to this day. She's 14 years old. Super good dog. Super good dog. My point is, because you're now trying to build a business around this, I'm going to paint a very vivid picture. There's a, a bloodline. I don't know if it's a bloodline, but it is epigenetically been passed along. And I'm using the name, and I don't know, but I even saw, shout out to American Standard Training, do a video on the Kimbo bloodline. The dog had offspring, and the dog itself has, it attacked people. Pups did. It's consistent, and people still choose to use the dog. I heard Cat and, uh, what, Gemini Kennels, um, where they've got the big dog, the rock back in the day. I heard them talk about it a little bit and people still use the dog because again, y'all really don't care about quality dogs. Y'all don't care about epigenetics and what goes into bettering the breed or dogs in general or putting something safe in somebody's hands and being able to vouch for it. So when you ask me, hey, how do I get paperwork on a dog? How do I get paperwork on a dog objectively that someone gave to me? Just stop it. Take care of that dog. Love that dog. Learn from that dog. Find you a dog that actually matters. Is there a way to do it? I'll tell you. You can go to the ABKC, I think, .net, WBA, and various other registries, and the bully specifically, and file for a single registration. But what I recommend you doing, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. But the gist of it is, if you're trying to do paperwork, or if you think, hey, this is an opportunity to, I don't want to say get over on people, but get over on people, because that's how I interpret the question, then don't. Imagine a dog having old Crenshaw in there. Crenshaw is a bloodline specific to the pit bull that fought. But you know what happens when you don't know that you've got the DNA in the dog to fight? I'm going to tell you a small story. Stan, the dog man, who you've seen on our page, has a game bred dog. Do you know what a game bred dog is? It's a dog that objectively was used to fight. He does not fight dogs, to be clear. That is not what he does. But you want a game bred dog because it has the ability to be active in a way and competitive in a way that the average dog doesn't. We were out playing one day in the water. And I don't know if it's on film or not, but here's what happened. Ego and the dog, they go over there, get on the sleeve, a little bite pillow, and what ends up happening? The dog gets frustrated because Ego is being successful and he bites the back of the vest and he bites the back of Ego's vest, doesn't get his skin, so much so that Stan can't get the dog off of Ego. Finally, he gets the dog off of Ego. While on the way back walking to the car, the dog bites Flex, and Borderline couldn't get the dog off Flex. Once the game is on, it's very difficult to keep a game dog around other dogs. If you do not know what's in a dog, then you do not know how to better a dog. And let me be very clear, I'm not giving you this book away. I'm not giving this one away, just, just to be clear. This was not being given away, but I will show you something. I that word was I reading. There is a Silver Fox study I would tell you to, I would encourage you to, to read about the Russian geneticist Dmitry, I can't say his name, Konst, Konstinovich. His last name is B E L Y A E B. And it almost sounds like believe worked out the principle 
by selectively breeding by, by which selective breeding brings about anatomical changes and identify the speed at which traits can change. And he did it roughly in about seven, what do you say? The key traits problems breeding He did it for one in a breeding program spanning 50 years involving over 50,000 silver foxes. The team selected those individuals whose behavior around humans was most companionable and, and sociable. After 20 generations, 35%, oh my bad, let me make sure you understand this. Within just four generations, cubs were produced which greeted humans by wagging their tails. In the sixth generation, just under 2% of the cubs, four out of 213 displayed this behavior. So, in six generations, four out of 213 foxes were okay with greeting humans. And one of the traits he wanted to see was could he breed out aggression or fear even. And the fear turned around and look, he, it has it in here, drawn behavior. You've got fear, aggression, and I think the last one says, yeah, friendly, aggressive, and fearful. You see that? That took him 50 years just to fix one epigenetic trait. And this goes on along with other studies that I've read to show you, walk you through how long it could take to breed good behavior into a dog. And let me be very clear in saying this, the pit bull is not a dangerous dog. Even when they were using it to fight, it would never attack a human. And if ever it did, it would be culled, AKA killed right in the ring because it should never attack a human. It would harm another dog, that prey drive. But if it took them 50 years to work through silver foxes simply coming up to this man, and here's a picture of the man with the foxes. You can see the man with the foxes right there. That's the man with the foxes. 50 years just to breed out fear, aggression, and make it friendly. And say consistently, if you do these things, you can better a breed. And this is what will change anatomically based on their head structure, their nose, their snoot, their, their paws, all these things. Their skin structure even changes over that time frame. When you select, selectively breed with the intent to domesticate in a sense. You guys, and, I'm, and this all goes back to, you want paperwork on something you're not even studying, that you don't understand. Also, you can say you've got a dog that validates you owning a dog that's so-called quality. Quality is work, people. It's work at its finest. That's what this is about, doing the work. You know why I'm not giving this book away? Because it confuses me. After all this time, 9 out of 10 people ain't looking for the information to better the dogs. Now, I respect those people who have wanted to do more. But then, I'm going to tell you this. Moving forward, you want me to answer specific questions for you. And I want to see a five-year plan. I, I want to see a five-year plan where you are breeding traits, bettering the breed. You understand structure. This is what you say. Well, how am I going to do that if I don't have the books? Ask the right questions. And I'll do a video on what questions I would ask to better things. I ain't trying to get over on nobody. I keep saying we have 20 years of work. It took him 50 years and he died along the road, which someone then. Oh man. Truett, I believe, in 1959, they began the Russian Academy of Science to tame and domesticate silver foxes. After his death, his research was carried by, again, these are some names here, these Russians, Ludmila, Ludmila L-Y-U-D-M-I-L-A, Tut, Trut, T-R-U-T. So he died and someone else finished the program because they believed in the work that needed to be done. And it was 50 years of work. They built an institute to study epigenetic traits along with behavioral things from foxes. So when you ask me, hey, what are some things I should read? Read about cows, read about horses, read about all animals breeding, read about wolves, which are in this book along with many other breeds. Watch as many documentaries as possible. Study your dogs. Study your dogs. Let me be very, hand me that other phone, please. I'm gonna show you something. So, let me paint a picture here. I've got dogs that I've, I've invested in so much so that I'm gonna show you the timestamp. So what this says, 
pause this, make sure they can see this. This says 253 today. Can they see that? You see 253 today? At 253 today, I can literally leave the store, come back. Mothers will be fine together. The dogs will be fine. So what happens when you have great parents. 253 I left today. Says today at the top. Now, let's go over to the second video. 452. 452, people. Bad people. I'm so cool. Every pup is accounted for. All pups are healthy. Most of you wouldn't leave your dog, especially with the type of money that we spend investing in our program. But because I poured into both females, because I know they know how to be great mothers, because I know the puppies are going to be safe, nine out of ten dogs in the wild, the dogs survive. The mom takes care of them. She does a very good job. There are pictures and videos of a mother carrying the dog who's, let's say, maybe the runt across the street to keep him safe. The way in which your dog functions is already rooted in them. It's in their essence. We've taken a lot of the dog away. We've talk, taken a lot of the animal away. We've taken the opportunity for the dogs to be great away because we don't care about the dogs. We care about the money. I love dog behavior. I love studying the opportunity to better the dog, which in turn betters me. Paperwork, people. It's it's a it, it almost offends me when you ask for paperwork, and I understand some of you say somebody gave me this dog. You, respectfully, a lot of people can't read paperwork. You don't even know what you're getting. You didn't see the great 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 grandparents. You don't know how they move, how they function, what they do, what they what their job was. And mind you, the American bully is not a dog that has a job. So, before you ask yourself about getting the paperwork, I would encourage you to use that dog as an opportunity to learn how to be a better dog person, manage a dog in which you're, you know, manage a dog in your life, and then go back and study. Study, 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 and as always, people, just take care of your dog.